What is up? I'm Moana Turtle, and today we're doing a Poke Market video. We're going to be going over the latest trends of Hidden Fates, and then we're going to talk about one of the oldest sets of all time. We're going to Jungle Unlimited, and there will probably be multiple episodes of Jungle because there's a limit, there's first edition, and then one of the coolest ones is the No Symbol. But we're going to start with the vanilla one that is Jungle. But of course, let's start with Hidden Fates, the the hype is still completely on. Let's take a look at the numbers to see how things are going. So we won't go into sealed products. Uh, I'm just going to always maintain my position that whatever the MSRP is, like I, in my opinion, it's not ever worth to pay more than that. Um, in my opinion, this thing will be printed, I think 12 months from now, we'll still see it on the shelves. Like at that point, obviously the hype will be over. You'll be able to find it readily. Uh, so. You know, in my opinion, if you can't find it and you're itching to pay extra, I would just say be patient. Uh, but let's see how the single prices are doing on TCG Player. Uh, yeah, Discord has been super active tonight. <laughs> Inside joke for some. All right. Um, so big old Zard 360. We'll take a look closer at him, but then we're going to main uh, take a look at these top four as always. Cynthia Shrine and Tapu Lele. From here, it looks like Cynthia is still holding up pretty well. Actually, let's start with her. So it looks like on TCG Player. So we're not going to go into the in-depth on eBay. I kind of feel like it's very repetitive in that eBay you'll kind of see maybe like uh, 10, 15, 20% cheaper, but you know, on specific sales. So if you are patient and you have like an alert, and then you can quickly snag it. Like uh, you can get better prices, uh, but TCG Player is kind of like just easier for for the sake of this video at least. So in general, eBay you can get slightly cheaper at the end of the day. Uh, but Cynthia holding still holding at 65. You know I'm honestly surprised by this. I would expect it her to go down. So Cynthia is holding up surprisingly well. Maybe it's just that standard effect, standard rotation. But you take a very good card and uh, yeah, still very sought after and you know what, maybe it does make sense like the pull rates for these full art supporters does seem pretty uh, high or pretty low rather. I feel like beyond Jesse and James and Giovanni, which are not part of the shiny vault, uh, I don't have a lot of them, you know, I make a big deal about not getting shiny GXs, but to be honest, at this point I have a lot more shiny GXs than full art supporters. That's probably how it should be. Shrine of Punishment, and you know, the, the gold cards, this is where it gets really interesting for as far as Cynthia maintain that price point is Shrine of Punishment, which is the uh, highest priced gold card, was not able to do that. Um, my thought is that Shrine of Punishment, you know, with all the tag teams, uh, kind of like when that Weezing Vileplume thing was there, it was a very cool mechanic, uh, but you know, it's pretty breakable and to be honest, like trying to punch rents against tag teams, like against the Mewtwo's and such, is just not strong enough. It takes way too long and it's not viable as a strategy at the current moment. Therefore, the price kind of reflects that. So near mint 21. Um, and to be honest, I'm surprised it's this low. Um, as far as it going lower, I wouldn't really hold my breath. Or at this point, it'll probably be a slow trickle further down. And then Lele. Lele's still doing pretty good too. You know, for a card that's no longer in standard rotation at least, uh, still holding that plus $30 after shipping on TCG Player. Uh, maybe this is kind of getting close to the bottom. You know, earlier in the week they had that 10% thing, 10% cash back from TCG Player, and I was tempted to pick up the rest of the cards I needed for the Hidden Fate set, but the re I actually held back, and one of the reasons is what we're going to talk about in the upcoming part, but we do want to get to our Main man, shiny Charizard, rocking a $360 price tag on TCG Player. I feel like a week ago or so, it was like $400, and now it's continuing to go down. You know, as especially when there's another wave of product. You know, all right, the Pokeballs just hit on Friday. You know, that probably unleashed another. I have no idea. Let's say whatever, 10, 100. I have no idea how many shiny charges enter the market. And when it's still fetching this high of a price for a card that will be printed from now until for the next two years, maybe. Um, this isn't that surprising. Again, I expect this to continue to go down. Um, to be honest, I'm almost surprised it's not faster. Uh, if I had to guess, my guess is always I've been maintaining the guess of like 200 would be the bottom. Right between Reshizard from Unbroken Bonds and Burning Shadows Charizard. 
let's go to we will go to ebay though for charizard if you were to pick one up now there was one that caught my eye at 325 and you can make an offer as well to pick up a uh probably freshly pulled charizard oh this card is booming right now um and i think that was the cheapest one if you wanted to pick up pristine heart <laughs> man um I'm, I kind of doubt this thing will sell super fast, but compared to what a month ago, maybe a month and a half, this thing has dropped like 60% value from that $10,000 sold listing. Uh, that's crazy. And on that, I think, yeah, 320 seems to be the bottom that you could currently pick it up. The interesting is the PSA 10. You know, at this point, these people putting this $1,000 price tag, uh, I feel like a week ago it was like thousands, low thousands, but now it's already sub thousand. Uh, let's see what's the lowest one we can find yeah, we can't we'll just go to sold listings and so a best offer was just received at started at 795 for PSA 10 so this is one interesting point I feel like BGS was just quicker to grade stuff and so like the BGS hit the market first and they kind of like established a price point now the PSA grades are coming back and I think for everything that is Pokemon in my opinion like I just if I collect the set it is all PSA the cards I have that are BGS are less than 10 in my total collection. Uh, so to be honest, like if I were to pick up a graded one at this point, it would probably be a PSA one. And uh, so like the price point seems like 750 until you get to, I'm not sure how far down it is. Gonna make me look bad. All right, there it is. Uh, oh wait, that's a PSA 9 500. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so you know that sub 800 is kind of like where the PSA 10 is now and it seems like the shiny Zard is the quality print quality is just really high so the only direction I see is down oh wait this was the card I was very surprised at so this one is a BGS but BGS 10 for 500 I feel like that's good but I see this thing continuing to go down so you know this thing becomes more affordable by the day by the hour uh i'm going to hold out for a little bit i think all right but now i want to get to a very fun topic that is uh jungle jungle these guys you can't really see it very well i'll probably have uh kind of like displaying cards in on the side but uh so jungle back to 1999 this one honestly has a bit of a sentimental value to me uh when i first got into pokemon um we were in elementary school at the time, so we didn't really have money to to buy these things. But uh, you know, basic came around. We weren't really familiar with the game. We find some one of my cousins had like the starter decks the, where you could face off, and and then you know then jungle dropped. It's like you know that was where I said, oh, can we go get these cards for like our birthday or whatever? So I think we went on release day. There was like a huge line at this store called. It was basically a wizard store. I don't remember what it was called. Um, and people were just buying by the box and when we get up to the counter people are just like all right here's your box you can buy only one per customer something like that uh, and then we're like yeah can we have one pack <laughs> so I just I obviously didn't have a lot of the cards but that was kind of when you know all my relatives and like siblings and stuff we started collecting Pokemon in earnest as opposed to oh this is new thing that maybe we should get into so jungle has sentimental value for me and I bet it's a lot more affordable than you guys think. That's kind of like the theme of these videos. You know, all this hidden fates hype that's going around and it's there. It, it's hyped for a good reason. But, you know, when it comes to, oh, am I going to complete the set or, you know, buy these 20 year old cards? I'm probably leaning towards this side. Uh, so binder collections. I love the idea of binder collections. Honestly, most of my PSA cards are in storage and looking for a jungle raw collection. Super affordable. So lightly played is the filter here and to be honest when you say lightly played for 20 year old cards they're more like mod played <laughs> uh, but either way the price point is still very low let's take a look the most expensive one Flareon to be honest I thought it was going to be Jolteon but Flareon for a oh that, that one's damaged let's apply this filter light play again light play is uh, with the uh, quotes $7 for a oh that's japanese light play <laughs> eight dollars seven dollars and seventy cents shipped light play hollow foil flareon from 1999 like oh should i get a i don't know i'm glacier maybe glacier on seven dollars eight dollars 
or a card from 20 years ago, I'm gonna go with the old one. You know, I feel like the price can only go down for Hidden Fate stuff and for these, most likely, obviously it's super slow, but these ones will definitely hold their value if nothing else. Uh, let's just check Jolteon because I, for some reason I thought Jolteon would be the most expensive one. Light play again, oh, wow. Under 650 for Light play Jolteon. And then, um, so let's go to PSA cards. Uh, to be honest, that might be where I focus. I'm very disappointed in myself, actually. I thought I completed the set in PSA 9 Unlimited. The 10 will jump up in price significantly. We'll check those in a second. Uh, so this is PokemonPrice.com, super useful website. I'm guessing just scrapes YouTube data. And we filtered it down to Unlimited PSA 9, and these just show the last sold. And there is not a single card that is over $50 for a 20 year old card. The most expensive one is Clefable at 35. And I'm disappointed in myself because in my collection, it's not that thick. There are only seven out of 16. So I'm not even halfway there. So when it comes to again, like, oh, are you, are you gonna buy the rest of the Hidden Fate singles? Like, probably not. If anything, I'm going to finish my jungle collection because not only is it 20 years old, not only do I think it'll hold its value, but it's also cheaper. So that's where I'll be focusing in the near future. And uh, But let's just take a look at this Clefable. $35, like, so it just basically gives you that last sold. Uh, so you, sometimes you can have to check, maybe it was a fluke or something, and let's just bring it filter down to nine and 10. Okay, actually, so 10's, whoa, 55, that's amazing. I wish I picked that up. But uh, the problem with the 10s is that they're just not sold that frequently. Where the 9s, even the 9s, they're not that often sold, but like, wow, these are super cheap. Uh, if we bought it early in the year, less than $20 for this card that I still need in my collection that has a lot of sentimental value, you know, again, versus these new shiny cards, which are awesome, but, you know, I, I struggle. I'm kind of happy I'm doing this series because it's almost a reminder to me as well. Oh, wow, 45 Dolteon. I knew Jolteon was up there. Um, you know, sentimental value for me, and in my opinion, has a better place in my collection. So we filter down for Jolteon, last one 45, and actually that's on the ink, that's on the ink, uh, it's been going up. And then the PSA 10 looks anywhere from 100 to 150, but uh, again, very infrequently sold. If we look at the pop report, less than 300 altogether, nine and 10. Like Charizard is probably like, 300 a week between 9 and 10 grade and to be honest on, on eBay I feel like you see more 10s than 9s and that, I feel like that says a lot as far as not only how well the print quality is which is ironic because like oh they did a very good job therefore it's not worth as much but that's just supply and demand and then two like I don't remember what the second point was but uh, all right let's just do one more check we're going to increase this to 10 and see how High, the numbers jump I feel like even though the numbers don't jump that high the problem will be that they're just not sold that often and I believe that yeah I believe the Kangaskhan is actually super difficult to grade we'll take a look oh gosh the last one was sold in 2017 so the problem isn't price or the problem is just lack of people putting it on the market so it's very interesting because like maybe that just means that it's super rare but the market has not been willing to pay its value therefore it just hasn't been sold um yeah under 220 between 9 and 10 that's very interesting for unlimited kangaskhan uh snorlax actually oh i'm surprised snorlax is the big winner here for some reason i thought venomoth was difficult too Let's just take a look at Snorlax and then we'll kind of call it. So yeah, under 175 between nine and 10. Ooh, looks like one was sold recently. You know, for a card that on eBay that the, this thing can only find data for three listings, $180, well, like uh, for me, or to me, like that's that feels low. I'm not saying it's worth to pay that amount, but for something that is so rare, uh, I would expect it to be higher, or so old and so rare, rather. Uh, but I don't think Snorlax is in my collection, so I'll probably looking to pick up a $30 one in the near future to complete my Jungle PSA 9. But then again, I mentioned this to me beginning. This is episode one of Jungle. <laughs> so next time we're going to hit that first edition, which will obviously be more, and then 
like, ah, oh, so excited for the no symbol. It's such a cool variant that, to be honest, I didn't know existed to as of this year. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, so that's our market episode. Uh, theme of the video is Hidden Fates continuing to decline. Cynthia holding up surprisingly well. Everything else is continuing to go down. Charizard three in the 300s at this point probably will break that barrier inside the next two weeks. Inside the month of October, that's gonna be my call. Inside the month of October, before we hit November, we will be under 300 for how you can pick up your, your shiny Charizards. And my guess is, let's go with by the inside the new year. 2020 will be about $200. That's my prediction. And when it comes to, oh, what should I pick up? Should I pick up the rest of the fates? Like I'm on the, you know what? I'm gonna complete my jungle set. It's not there yet, not even halfway through. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. And that's it for today's episode, guys. As always, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Are there specific topics you would like us to cover? Um, and or if you just appreciate the content, you know, hit that like button to let me know or let me know in a comment. I'd greatly appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Moana Turtle and I'll catch you guys next time.